Tangira Vasi. Today I have a, a grown up boy. He has proximal muscle weakness. <clears throat> this muscle weakness started at the age of 23 years. He is 33 years old now. He was perfectly fine till 23 years of age. He was walking well, eating, playing, everything. Life was at its full peak when he was a 23 year old boy. But at 23 years, he started weakness in his lower limbs. Initially, he was unable to walk properly. The, the gait was clumsy. He used to fall. And he says that I had weakness in my lower limbs at that time. And then with the passage of time, the weakness progressed proximally and the trunks also got involved and the upper limbs also got involved. And now he's so handicapped that he cannot stand by himself. He cannot sit by himself. He cannot walk by himself. He is even not able to raise his both arms. Imran, apne dono bazu upar karke dikha sakte hain aap? Nahi karke dikha sakte. Koshish karein. He is trying, but he is not able to raise his both arms above this level. Okay, now, <clears throat> if you look at the lower limbs of Imran, you can appreciate a gross muscle wasting in both limbs. He is 33 years old now, but look at the legs. They are so weak, emaciated muscle weakness. There is hypotonia and there is diminished reflexes in the both lower limbs as well as upper limbs. Look at the muscle bulk. The muscles are so wasted. Muscles are so wasted. Then he also developed weakness in the trunk also. And now he's not able to sit independently. He's sitting because he has a support at this moment. But he's mentally well. You can see. What's your name? Imran. Which class are you studying? I'm 12th. Okay. So, do you want to go first? Yes. Okay. Pakistan. So you can see his mentally well, he's speaking well, he maintains eye contact, he responds to my commands, he's otherwise fine mentally. So problem was with his muscles. Now, the point to ponder is what is the problem of muscles which started at 23 years of age? He, he was perfectly well initially, but at 23 years he started this muscle problem. The answer is SMA type 3. He's diagnosed as SMA type 3. Now, please do remember that SMA type 3 is mild SMA. It also has an adult onset and it's also known as Kuckelberg Willander disease. So, actually, patients with type 3 SMA they have 3 to 4 copies of the SMN2 gene. SMN2 gene is not entirely deficient or mutated. Among the SMA type 3 who have a juvenile onset, they account for 30% of overall SMA cases. Symptoms usually appear between somewhere between 18 months to 18 years or maybe 22 years, 23 years. Affected individuals, they achieve independent mobility initially. However, proximal weakness in these patients might cause falls and difficulty with climbing stairs and over time many lose their ability to stand and walk so instead use a wheelchair to move around. And most of these patients, they also develop Foot deformities, scoliosis, and respiratory muscle weakness. Now you can see that this boy has wheelchair dependent. Now this boy is wheelchair dependent. And with passage of time, these children they develop respiratory dysfunction as well. Now, in 2020, there was a new drug which was approved by FDA, and that is called wrist diplam. Wrist diplam was approved for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy by FDA in 2020. But please do remember that that drug too works in children who are around two months of age. So children with SMA type 3 who are around two months of age, now they are being treated with risk plan. But this patient at the age of 33 years is very difficult to cure with this drug. There is another drug which is approved by FDA in December 2016 and that is Spinraza or Nucin Ursin. So Spinraza was also approved for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy in pediatric as well as in adult patients. 
Now it must be kept in mind that SMA is a genetic disease that affects the nerves in your muscles. It actually impairs the chemicals in nerves that help muscles work. There is a gene which is called survival motor neuron 1 or SMN1 gene which is missing or altered in people with SMA. In healthy people the SMN1 gene produces the SMN protein. This protein is vital to the function of nerves that control muscles. Without this protein, nerve cells cannot work properly and they die, which leads to severe muscle weakness. The SMN2 gene is a backup gene that can also produce some SMN protein, but the SMN2 gene cannot fully make up for the loss of the SMN1 gene. The number of SMN2 genes varies from person to person. People with more SMN2 genes usually have a less severe form of the disease. The severity of SMA ranges from mild muscle weakness to total paralysis and the need for support to breathe even. SMA is actually characterized by degeneration of alpha motor neurons in the spinal cord. You can see that the brain is normal. It's not a disease of the brain, but it is a disease of the spinal cord. There is degeneration of alpha motor neurons in the spinal cord and that affects the control of voluntary muscle movement. The disease has an autosomal recessive inheritance. Since it's an autosomal recessive, so that means that both parents of the affected individual, they are only carriers of the affected gene. Therefore, they are not going to present with any symptoms of the disease. And this is what makes SMA difficult to foresee and to apply preventable measures. SMA type 1 is called Wernig-Hoffman disease. It affects babies less than 6 months old and it is the most severe type of the disease. Sitting unsupported may never be achieved and they present with profound hypotonia, symmetrical flaccid paralysis and no head control with poor spontaneous mobility and reduced anti-gravity movements of limbs. SMA type 2 develops in babies between 3 and 18 months old. This type is less severe than type 1 and most children survive into adulthood and can live long, fulfilling lives. They may achieve ability to sit unsupported but they may not be able to walk independently. Joint contractures and kaphas scoliosis are very common along with fine tremors of upper extremities. So you can see that there are fine tremors in this boy also. You can see the fine tremors in the hands. So one by nikale. Puri by nikale. You can see the tongue fasciculations also. Look at the tongue fasciculations. You can see the fine tremors in the hands. So this boy is having SMA type 3. It is least severe type. It is further divided into SMA 3A and SMA 3B according to the time when the first symptoms of the condition appears if before or after three years of age if it appears before three years of age we call it as sma 3 a and if it appears after three years of age we call it as sma 3 b so this boy is having sma 3 b there is another type which is called sma type 4 and this type of sma patients they are diagnosed in adulthood and they pre present with only mild problems so, because the disease is not so mild, it has affected his walking, his sitting, his hand movements, the power is so much decreased that he's not able to even stand or even sit independently and the degree of muscle function is severe at this moment. So, we classified him as SMA 3B rather than SMA type 4 in which the patients have only mild problems. Otherwise, by classification, SMA type 4 is the one in which the which is diagnosed in adulthood and they present with only mild problems. Now, a very question, common question you get in exams is what is the best test to diagnose SMA? The answer is SMA gene mutation. Besides genetic analysis, we also do EMG and NCS. And uh, EMG and NCS have findings in these patients. And we also do creatinine kinase in order to see the muscle function. Now, if this boy comes in the exam and examiner asks you what are your differential diagnoses, then please do consider Duchenne muscular dystrophy because Duchenne muscular dystrophy can also present like this. In older child, it is preferable to say Becker muscular dystrophy. 
because by this age background muscle dystrophy they are also wheelchair bound so either Duchenne or background muscle dystrophy can come in uh, differential Charcot Marie tooth disease and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis can also come in differential diagnosis so I repeat number one Duchenne muscle dystrophy or background muscle dystrophy number two Charcot Marie tooth disease and number three amyotrophic lateral sclero sclerosis you can see that the legs are very thin and these Thin legs can also be present with this type of muscle weakness in Charcot Marie Tooth disease. I especially look for pascavus and hammer toes, but there is no classical pascavus and hammer toes in this child. Thank you so much, Imran. Uh, this video has been made after taking permission from Imran just to help students understand what is SMA for all its types and how you diagnose. And uh, as far as the management is concerned, the management is also supportive. Uh, the two drugs which I have told you earlier. They are also uh, recognized recently by FDA and besides that you need to do physiotherapy, occupational therapy, you, you maintain a good muscle function, uh, psychological support to the patient and uh, to keep an eye on respiratory function as well, look for scoliosis, look for joint contractures. Uh, these children can develop scoliosis and if respiratory function is also impaired then these children, they require respiratory support as well. Thank you so much.